Well, hi there guys and welcome to another video. So guys, today you find me uh, outside my facility in the lovely November, quite wintry feeling day. Um, you might note that I am in front of what appears to be a light fixture. Um, my light fixture that was here when I moved into the flat some quarter century ago, um, which has been augmented by another light fixture. Um, it's actually not a light fixture anymore. The ballast in it broke and I couldn't be bothered to fix it. And so it lay fallow for quite some time. And then recently I decided, hmm, I need some outdoor wireless. Where shall I put an access point? And I came up with a series of ridiculous ideas uh, which manifested themselves inside this particular light fitting. So today I'm going to show you through some of that ridiculousness. Um, hopefully you will enjoy it with me. And so without further ado, I open the light fitting to reveal a bunch of things that are not a light. Let us take a closer look. So taking a closer look at this lovely light fitting, um, what we have is the power cable coming out from inside the house, which initially goes into this splicey piece. Uh, the splicey piece, unrelatedly, has this Sonoff wireless power switch uh, plumbed into it, which actually then goes to my floodlight. And that's simply so that I can control my floodlight in a smart manner not related to the solution being discussed here today. The other item coming out of the splicey piece uh, is I've wired on an ordinary UK socket there. Off the UK socket, I have a splitter. Off the splitter, firstly, I have an ordinary common or garden USB-C power supply, uh, which connects into a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the other item coming off this splitter is a TP-Link gigabit Ethernet power line adapter, out of which I have a very short length of a twisted pair cable going into the Raspberry Pi to provide it with the Ethernet access. And then the Raspberry Pi's wireless is set up to be an access point to this outdoor area. Very simple, very normal thing to find in a box like this. Also, again, semi-unrelatedly, I have this Zigbee uh, thermometer and humidity sensor that I leave in the box to indicate if I'm having any problems with thermals or wetty bees. Uh, anyway, that's the outside box. Very normal, very standard. Let's now pop inside and have a look at the other end of the Ethernet over power line solution that we've used. So here we are upstairs in the bedroom where the other TP-Link Gigabit Ethernet over power line adapter is. This one can be seen a little bit more easily because it's not tucked in to a tiny box with lots of gubbins. Uh, we can see three lights on there. The light that indicates it's powered on, the light that indicates it's connected to the power line and paired with the other adapter, and the light that indicates it's connected to the switch via this rather fetching orange cable that uh, goes up onto the top of the wardrobe. So let's look at the other end of that. So here we are on top of the wardrobe where we can indeed clearly see the orange cable arriving in here and going into this gigabit switch, which is uplinked to that two and a half gig switch. So that's good. I will take a moment here to note that of course the power line ethernet adapter here in the bedroom plugged into my main ring uh, versus the other power line adapter which goes into the lighting circuit, two different circuits. Um, it is true that total cable distance will reduce the throughput and any filtration um, going through an RCD, some people say, also can reduce the quality of the signal. Um, but, you know, it's connecting absolutely fine here despite being cross-circuit and through an RCD and through extension bits of cables and splices and so on and so forth. So it will absolutely work. But um, yes, obviously recommendations. If you actually want to get gigabit, um, then you would need some very, very nice setup that is very uncomplicated but I don't need gigabit on this anyway because it's just a 72 meg 2.4 gigahertz wireless setup that I've got out there anyway let's continue so I will show you a couple of things firstly the TP-Link power line utility uh, that is supplied for use with these devices uh, it installs WinPCAP as part of the installation so I assume it does some very low level ethernet way of discovering and communicating with these devices. Um, all this tool does, 
once it's discovered them, is it'll tell you the throughput. So it currently says it's doing 236 megabits per second, which is ample. Um, and then you can just go in and set some settings, which is basically just whether or not you want to allow power save, and that's pretty much it. So that's that. Um, the other thing that I will show you, let me just uh, connect into the Raspberry Pi, plugged into the other side of that. Um, so if I just go in and show you the network setup that I've done in here. So I've just named my interfaces um, Net Zero for the built-in Ethernet on the Pi and uh, Wi-Fi Zero for the built-in Wi-Fi on the Pi. Uh, all I've done with the uh, Net Zero interface is stick it in a bridge. All I've done with the Wi-Fi Zero interface is no config whatsoever because the access point software handles that. Um, and then I have simply created a bridge with some fairly basic settings and then put my network settings on the bridge itself. So fairly basic. Um, and then the, uh, the access point software, which is host APD, does the rest. So there is a host APD uh, configuration here. And if we look at that, it's very simple. It's a very easy to use a bit of software. You tell it what interface is your wireless adapter, what bridge you want it to connect to. And then in here is every setting you could set. And it's just got the default commented out usually. And you can just do whatever you want in here. Um, you know, set up your SSID, um, WPA settings, um, everything country like time zone channel everything you can possibly imagine that you would need to do with uh, wireless is all in here and the config goes on and on for days it is a giant config file very very versatile indeed um, and that's it really it's you run it and it just kind of works and um, yeah, I, I can I can have a look at the last few lines of the of the outputs, and you know it just kind of yeah it it starts and does what it needs to do. So that's about it. Um, Raspberry Pi, hardly the most impressive radio in the world. Um, the hardware in there, but probably enough for covering a few square meters of side garden. So it is what it is. Well, guys, that's about it for today's video. I hope you found it interesting and informative. And guys, as always, please do feel free to comment below. Perhaps you'd like to tell me about your experiences using Ethernet over power line, or possibly outdoor wireless, or possibly things you have done with a Raspberry Pi that are odd. Anyway guys, that's all we've got time for. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. But until then guys, there's very little more for me to say except well, goodbye. Jacob is again recording, he is recording like he does, he is recording because he's a Jacob and he records like a Jacob should, Jacob uh.